Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to cover something that's useful on a bunch of stuff, particularly infantry figures, and that is how to paint camouflage. Really quick and easy way. Now this is inspired by the old Zeltbahn from the German infantry in World War II, but it works really well on everything. But with that in mind, we're going to use the old German Grenadiers as an example for this one. So in a departure from the norm, I've actually got my finished example here already, so we can take a quick look at how this is going to seem when it's all finished. Now, as you can see, it's not 100% accurate. Like This is not going to fit in with a historical display. Like If you really want to be 100% perfect, that's not what you're going to get. But it's a good impression of what Zeltbahn used to look like. Okay, And you can see how this pattern would be useful for just about anything else you wanted to do. Now it's really very simple, which makes it a huge advantage if you've got a lot of these guys that you want to paint quickly. I've got here two sets of colors which you could use to paint this. Now on the old Vallejo side, I've got flat brown, German uniform. Now this is this is their green German uniform. You're not looking for Feldgrau with this one. And German camo beige World War II, because that is a name that needs to be said in full every single time. On the Citadel side, you've got instead Mornfang Brown, Zandri Dust, and Castellan Green. Now the difference between Castellan Green and German, uh, German uniform is that the German uniform is a little bit more green. You know, it's a little bit more sort of vibrant, um, almost cartoony compared to the other colors that you're going to have here. If you want a more specific color to match that, then Citadel's Warg Flesh is a good stand-in for that. But personally, the way that I did this guy was to use Castellan Green. So that's what we're going to use today. Now painting this is pretty messy. <laughs> you know, you can imagine as this is going on, it's going to get everywhere. So it is the first step. Once you've got your base coat on, you're immediately going to go and lay down the ground colors for this camouflage. Here is one that we prepared earlier. Now you can see I've given this guy a quick base coat. He's had Mechanicus Standard Gray, but any gray color will do for this. You know, you're going to paint over almost all of this. And then I've gone and laid down the base coat of flat brown all over the, uh, the tunic here. Now, fun fact, this might also have been a tent that he's cut up and thrown over himself like a poncho. <laughs> you know, needs must. And it was made from a similar looking camo um, fabric. So if you want that, you know, it's going to look much the same. Now, these guys are Warlord's Plastic Grenadiers. Uh, so, you know, quite nice models. They look pretty good. Ordinarily, like if you see these green patches... You want to go to where there is a belt or a break in the, the pattern and keep going. Like say, for example, I was going to do this white splotch. I would go up as far as this belt, but then not stop. You see, there's a little bit more of it just under there. If you're going to use equipment as a natural border, it'll start to look a little peculiar. So you see up on a shoulder, I've broken through. You know, you don't want this to look unnatural by stopping wherever there's an edge. Okay, you want the equipment to look like it's been put over a piece of fabric that has all of this pattern all the way through. So just something to bear in mind when we come to put on our base coats for the other colors. So we have here my Grenadier, and I remembered his helmet cover at last as well. So <laughs> that's now been painted in brown too. Now what I've got is my Castellan Green and one of these raggedy old stippling brushes I like to make. You know, these are great for anything that's going to end up with a random pattern. So if I get that up really close, get the old hand in the way there, and you see it's just, it's just a bit rubbish, really. But for this, it's fantastic, because it's going to give us a nice rough edge on everything. So, I just want a wee bit of paint on the brush that I'm going to work into the bristles, almost like we're dry brushing. And then bring it on up and pick where to start from. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go in here and just jam this color on. And I want it to look like it's going up through the belt. So I'll jam a little on the back there as well. And like I say, when I say jam, I mean really just shove it on there. 
Now the idea with this is when you're finished, you don't want anybody to be able to tell what color you base coated it. Like we're gonna use green, beige, and brown. Somebody should be able to look at this and go, hmm, I don't know if this you know, started from green or, or what have you. So just follow around and you wanna coat. With the green, I tend to do probably about a third. I do a little bit more with the beige because it just helps set everything off. But really, you just wanna to go to the edges of things and just start getting the vague shape. So we see here, you know, this is incredibly messy. This is why you do this step first. So make sure you're gonna get a little of everything. Go in there in the front of his belt. Two. And this does not take long to do. Now actual Zeltbahn had a nice sort of rounded edge to its camo. So if you're not getting really speckly edges on this, don't worry too much. So, uh, let's put a little bit more down just on the edge of his helmet. You know, you can be fairly generous and again, you want to be random with where this is going. So any spots where it's not quite covering, you can go back over and just you know, tidy it up, touch it up, because you want this to be nice and solid. Once we're finished with this stage, you know, we're going to paint in all the other details and then wash it. So you want this to be a nice solid color. With plenty of time for the green to dry, we're now ready to do the yellow or the beige, whatever you want to call it. I'm <laughs> prepping the paint in the same way. Let's get that Zandri dust and just start splodging it on in the same way. So anywhere that there's a corner, you want to make sure you're going to head underneath as well and try not to leave big gaps between these three colors. So if you've got a green area, you don't want to avoid it entirely with this beige stuff. So up here, for example, I'm going to cross this area between the two greens with a little bit of the beige too. And this is just how you want to break up your colors. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish all of this off, get all the camo patterns down, and then I'm going to do the base coat for all the other colors on the miniature. That won't take me too long, but it lets me skip ahead and show you a little bit more about what's going to happen next. Our soldier here has now had all of his base colors applied, and you can see what a difference it makes when their camo pattern's sort of in context. How much different it looks when all of these little gaps and things that you would see naturally in a real camouflage pattern have been applied to the miniature. It also sort of makes it stand out that much less, which is kind of the point. Now, ordinarily, you can spend ages on these patterns, but the problem being is that if they work properly, you put them on the table and they just break up the outline of the miniature and make it very difficult to see that you've actually painted them. Great for display, but for gaming, I like these really sort of sharp, cartoonish sort of patterns. As I said, good sort of middle ground here. But now that he's had all of that, you might hear me shaking it. What does he need? Agrax Earthshade! Um, I've used to great effect the Quick Shade Dip, uh, particularly on Warlord's Metal Germans, though it's a really good uh, choice. You can also use a Strong Tone Wash. That works really well as well. So I've got here all the Agrax Earthshade I'm going to need, and we'll just start chucking it on. Get that depth to the miniature, and add a little bit of variety to the color. You see what a difference it makes to the Feldgrau too. That's really cool. So particularly around the back and where his tunic sort of meets his uh, his jacket, you want to make sure that you are getting this into the recesses. So I'm going to go around, I'm going to cover this dude in Agrax Earthshade, and then I'm going to give him about half an hour to dry. I really want to make sure that this was all finished off and dry before I go on to the next step. So we'll come back to that when that's done. Our wash is dried, and you can see what a difference that makes. All of those recesses and the shaded areas are nicely shaded with the wash, so there's a lot of depth to the miniature suddenly. But it does make those uh, higher points a little bit darker. So ordinarily, this is where you go ahead and you would highlight all of the elements of his uniform. So along the creases of his sleeves, his trousers, his skin, so on and so forth. But you'll notice on this fella here, I have gone and highlighted the camo pattern too. Now this is pretty simple. And there's only one area that you need to really highlight, and that is the beige stuff. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. I'm going to use Ushabti Bone. 
uh, because I've used uh, Citadel paint underneath. You know, maybe it's superstition, but <laughs> I like to use the same stuff on top as well. But just introducing that really nice beige color for the, for the camo, uh, it helps to lighten them up quite a bit and it will make this stand out across the table really well. So as ever, I've prepped my paint with just a little bit of water and I'm only gonna get a little bit on the brush. You know, I don't wanna overload it. So now, just check how much I'm gonna leave behind. And it's just a case of highlighting all of these areas that we put the beige on. Now you don't need to be too careful with this. You do wanna leave the recesses that darker beige, but around the edges in particular, you can be quite sloppy because you want a little bit of that other color to be still showing through. So when I come to the edge, instead of really closely following the pattern that was left behind, I leave a little bit of a raggedy look like that. This is particularly good if you've got the bread bag, uh, this section here, and a big splodge of camo color <laughs> right next to each other because it'll help split those two up, make them look quite different from one another. So that is all you need to do to highlight that. Now there is one last step. You'll see in some cases, and this isn't the case for all of them, but you'll have a, I've, I've, I've always heard it called raindrop pattern, which is little areas which have three straight lines slashed away from them. Here on his jacket, and thin line, thin line, and irregular length. There we go, that looks better. Just gives a little bit of a difference in edge between those colors. So now you'd go around, you'd finish the camo pattern, and then do all the highlighting on the rest of his material. So he'll go from looking like that to looking like that. Quite a difference. So there we have it. The fastest way I've ever come across myself of painting fairly accurate Zeltbahn. So as ever guys, if you found that useful, you know, please drop me a line, just comment down in there, or you can get in touch with me on my Facebook or Twitter accounts. So as ever guys, hopefully you found something useful there and enjoy the rest of your day.